Hi guys, EBP Man with Tabits for me. And today we're going to do an unboxing review of the Samsung Gear S. The Samsung Gear S was released today in North America. This happens to be the AT&T version of the Gear S. And what we're going to do now is just unbox it, see what's inside. We'll do a startup of the actual watch, and then we'll do a review of its capabilities. All right, so we'll go ahead and break the seal. Okay. Let me get this guy open. All right. So, okay, that opened up nicely. So here we have the actual gear quick start guide. We have the gear itself. That's the gear S. It's um, almost, uh, it's pretty big. So it's almost like a bracelet uh, type uh, style watch. Put that to the side. Pull this out. It opens up right here. And inside, <clears throat> we have a charging base, uh, very similar to what you have with the um, Gear Fit and also the Gear 2 and the Gear. So um, has charging cradle. It's not like the Moto G that you just uh, place it and then it charges. And also, I guess the other thing to look at is that the charger it does use a micro USB charging port. You have a charging cable, so it's not a separate brick with a USB cable, so everything is all uh, included there. And then you have, it looks like, <clears throat> excuse me, an instruction guide, or a health and safety guide, actually, on all the things to do and not to do when using your Gear S. All right, so that was it. That's what's in the box. You have your charging um, cradle, your charging cable and, and brick, uh, a safety uh, guide, the, a very simple quick start guide, so there's not a lot much uh, to the Gear S and the Gear itself. Let's start it up. So before we start up the Gear uh, S, let's talk a little bit about the, the actual watch itself. Now, this is uh, very different uh, from, let's say, an example here, uh, the Moto G uh, 360, actually the uh, Motorola 360 watch in the sense that um, this watch, while it is a smart watch and does have connectivity using Google Wear to your phone, um, cannot, um, I would say, uh, interact independently from a phone. So this has to be tethered or connected to a phone. Uh, the Gear S has its own cellular connectivity, which means that it can serve as a phone and it also can uh, act on its own without having to be tethered to a phone. Now, keep in mind that if you do get this uh, this uh, watch, the Gear S, it is only compatible with Samsung phones. And there's a full list of all the Samsung phones. So um, you would expect that the it would be compatible with the Note 4, the Note 3, the S4, and the S5, obviously. Uh, but it's not compatible with other phones like the LG phone or the Motorola uh, lines or even um, the Apple lines. So it's really something that ties you into the Samsung ecosystem. It does have a 2-inch uh, display, um, and it will support... Um, multiple um, network types, 2G, 3G, and in the U.S., according to AT&T, this is um, a 4G connection, which I'll see once I start using it. If we take a look at here, the box real close, you'll be able to see um, some of the uh, feature sets that it has. It has an AMOLED um, screen, so it's going to have a gorgeous screen. It is um, something, again, that can connect uh, with, uh, with your devices. It does support the S Health and it has its uh, standalone GPS. Um, you'll notice that it does support HS, uh, uh, what is it, HSPA Plus here for data streaming. Um, Edge as well. And then what you have here, and which is really important, is that it's IP67 certified. That means that if it gets wet um, or dust, um, you really don't have to worry about it, especially if you're running. I would, wouldn't take this for a swim, but if you're running with your watch and you get caught in the rain, you don't have to worry about that. It does have a, um, a built-in gyroscope, accelerometer, compass, ambient light sensors, barometer as well, and uh, as well as a, a UV detector, um, which you can see that there's kind of a little... Uh, thing there, and then also a uh, heart rate monitor. Uh, the watch itself, um, I kind of like this style clasp. Um, it's uh, it's it's the kind that you can adjust right here to the appropriate setting for your hand or your wrist, and then you just close the clasp. What I like about this clasp versus you know something like this is that uh, it really minimizes the amount of wear 
that you have uh, when you're t putting on and off the actual watch. Also, what I like that, despite the fact that the, the Moto 360 was available with a leather band, and I, I converted mine to a diver's band, um, I like the fact that this has a, a, a rubber uh, band because if you are going to be using this as an athletic watch, you're going to be sweating, you're going to be getting wet, you're going to be taking a shower, and uh, leather doesn't really do well with any of those things. So I really like that feature. On the back here, you'll notice that you have your sensors. So you have your heart rate sensor and then your charging point. Now, I'm not sure yet, and we'll once um, we're finished doing our review and, and I, I'm using it for a couple of days, I'll, I'll give you my impressions. But most um, new um, wearables are, are really communicating the ability to have a uh, continual heart rate monitor um, detection or, or measurement. I don't know if this is going to be continually on and checking um, your heart rate, but that's something that you're seeing with the new Fitbit. You're seeing that with Microsoft's product. You're starting to see it with a lot of the watches or wearables that are coming out or the fitness bands that they are continually monitoring your, your heart rate as they're being used. As far as battery life goes, uh, they claim that this will have uh, two days of battery life. We'll have to see. I don't know that yet since uh, I just uh, got it today. Um, RAM it has 512 uh, megabytes of RAM for processing, has four gigs of internal memory. So if you want to store music, I'm sure you can store some things on there. And then uh, from a battery perspective, it has a 300 milliamp uh, lithium ion battery. Um, from an audio perspective, it supports you know the, the standard formats that you have in the market, anywhere from an MP3 to MP4As, WMAs, you know, you really don't have to worry about if you're going to be uh, playing some music on it. And then it is Bluetooth 4.1 and it supports USB uh, 2.0. It um, has Wi-Fi connectivity as well, so it's 802.11bgna, uh, which is um, also great. And then the glass itself is Google Gla is um, Gorilla Glass. Now, I'll probably put a screen protector on this. Um, I've always been a fan of putting something on top of the screen. Uh, Gorilla Glass is a very strong glass, but I always like having something there just in case. So let's go ahead now and start up the watch, and we'll see uh, what the startup process is like. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to power up the actual watch, and um, I'm going to press and hold the center button right here. So press and hold it. And we have the Gear S uh, logo popping up, Samsung. Again, the Samsung logo now. This watch is not using Android, so you never saw it like an Android logo uh, come up. And now um, what we're going to do is install, it's telling you install Samsung Gear on your mobile device, or you can download it if you'd like. So what we're going to do is hit Next. Um, and it's right now looking to connect to my uh, phone. So let me go ahead and install it on my phone. All right, so now that I, um, I have it recognizing the actual gear, I'm going. It's, it's now vibrating, letting me know that it, there's a peering event taking place. Um, I'm going to hit uh, OK, and it is right now downloading some additional software. It looks like there may uh, possibly be even an update. Let's see what's going on. A little bit more involved than what I had anticipated. Um, so I had to update my gear manager software in order to be able to support the watch. And you'll notice that, again, it's doing some type of update after the pairing. So we're going to let this process continue. Then I'll bring, uh, turn the video back on so you can see the next steps. So now after the update, the software did go through some update processes. Now it's connecting over to the gear. Um, and it looks like there is, I don't know if there is an update required, but there was definitely a, a longer process than normal. Um, that I've seen for some of the other gear products. I'm going to go through and you know accept uh, terms and conditions, um, and these are I guess all the legal notices about um, all the capabilities that are available. Um, so I'm just going to say I agree to all, and it's, so you don't have to go through all of them, and say finish. It's um, right now saying that it's it's connected now successfully, and you'll notice that I'm starting to get some notes. Okay on my watch. So I'm going to say, okay, it says some email accounts are not selected for email selection to receive notifications. I'm going to click on okay. And right now, these are all the applications, I guess, that I can get notifications from. Um, oh, there's an update. Uh, it looks like there's a significant update. So I'm going to go ahead and download uh, that software. And 
we'll go we'll go ahead and perform the update. So so far the process has been as I've been connecting the gear to the actual uh, phone. There's been two software updates, one to the gear manager that I had on my phone as we're going through that process. Um, and the second now looks like there's an update to the actual gear itself. So I'll pause this, let this download complete, and then we'll continue. So here what you're seeing now is the actual um, software package was downloaded successfully, and the next step is that it's going to push it to the actual gear um, itself. So right now uh, we'll wait for that to happen and I'm sure we'll go through a reboot process. So I'll pause the video and then once this is complete I'll start it up again. So now what we have is the the software package has been completely downloaded um, onto the actual watch itself and it is now going through the upgrade process. You can see how the percentage bar is moving forward. We'll just let it continue. So it probably took a little bit over a minute and a half for the actual update to take place. So we're going to let it continue. So you saw 100% bar went through, but it's still doing a little bit more work. So I'd say set aside at least around three minutes uh, for the entire process to complete. So we'll see how much more there is to go. Once the update is complete, it's going to go through a reboot process, and which is pretty normal um, for any Android operating system or either even this, which is the Tizen operating system. So um, it's taken me back uh, to the actual an original setup screen. So here I have the ability to um, modify my clock. Um, I'm just going to hit next. So it's giving me a tutorial, you know, that this is the main navigation and how you can switch from screen to screen, you know, how to, how to swipe, if that's something that you want to do to see messages, swipe to go back. And now I'm getting the message that the gear is finally updated. So again, still going through the tutorial of how you can swipe left and how you can swipe right for different features. Swiping up is another feature. Swiping down. I'll do it with this hand. Again, more swipe tutorial commands. So I'm going to go ahead and swipe down, uh, swipe up, and now the actual process is complete. And as you can see right here, we have a high-end looking uh, watch. Um, you know, I would say almost like if you look at a Submariner from Rolex kind of look. Uh, that was a setup process and in install. Uh, later on, we'll do a tutorial on all the features. Um, if you have any comments or questions about this uh, video, please leave them on the YouTube channel. We'll continue to post updates on the Gear S and my experience with the Gear S in subsequent videos.